Hi guys, welcome to my microbiology presentation and in this presentation I'll be covering microbial genetics, transcription and translation. So the learning objectives of this are to know how genetic information is stored within a bacterial cell, to know about the different genetic elements of a bacterial cell, and to know how genetic information leads to the synthesis of a protein. So this here is an electron micrograph of a bacterial cell. So this long stringy bits here we see around here around this white blob this is the bacterial's DNA, so all this is its genome. If we notice over here by these arrows, these short squiggly lines that look like loose pieces of spaghetti. These are the plasmids. Okay, so these contain DNA which can be transferred between cells. Okay, so just a quick comparison between DNA and plasmids. So both consist of your typical bases A, C, G, and T. DNA is much longer and contains all the essential bacterial genes, whereas plasmids contain genes for resistance and other properties which can be conjugated to other bacterial cells to pass on this gene. Plasmids can also be independently replicated, which means you don't need to replicate all the genome. You can just replicate just a single plasmid at a time without having to interfere with the main genome. So now we're going to go on about the road from DNA to protein. So this involves two steps, which is transcription and translation. So transcription is turned from DNA into mRNA, and translation is from mRNA to amino acids. So an easy way to remember this is that transcription is when you're copying something. So you're copying the DNA into mRNA, and translation is when you're turning it from one format to another. So that's going from mR mRNA, which is one sort of language you could say, to amino acids, which is a different language. Okay, so the first step is transcription, so DNA into mRNA. So in order for DNA to produce a protein, a, co a copy of it must first be made in the form of mRNA, which stands for messenger ribose nucleic acid. This is structurally very similar to DNA, except it's single-stranded, and its bases consist of A, U, C, and G, instead of your DNA's equivalent of A, T, C, and G. So this breaks down into three steps. So step one, we have RNA polymerase, which binds to the DNA double helix at a specific region called a promoter region. And this step is called initiation, and in order for this to be promoted, a sigma factor will be involved. Then step, step two, this is the addition of nucleotides to the three prime end of the growing chain, and this is called elongation. Then the final step, once the mRNA strand has been synthesized, the transcription process is terminated and the RNA polymerase is released. So, as obvious, this step is called termination. Now we're going to translate it from messenger RNA into amino acids. So the conversion of mRNA into the corresponding amino acids. This consists of, again, three stages, initiation, elongation, and termination. So in initiation, we're starting off with the start codon, and this usually consists of the AUG codon. Then when it comes to elongation, the ribosome moves along the mRNA, adding on more amino acids as we go along. Then at termination, we get stop codon, which releases the polypeptide, and it can then go off to the Golgi apparatus to be... Um, further modified. And also there are several molecules which aid in the process of translation, so one of which is tRNA, which stands for transfer RNA. This is a T-shaped molecule which carries an amino acid as well as an exposed triplet code. And it's this exposed triplet code which can then bind by hydrogen bonds to the mRNA code. So, so it is specific. So if the mRNA code read ATG, for example, then the tRNA will read UGC. So it's corresponding to the mRNA code and at the end you've got the amino acid. And also we've got RNA, or rRNA, which stands for ribosomal RNA. And this is used for catalyzing peptide bond formation. So this picture here just gives you a really good overview of everything that goes on in the cell. So this here is just DNA replication, which I'll cover in another video. And this step here is your transcription. So here we've got the DNA, we've got the RNA polymerase, which is making this RNA strand here, which as we can see is single-stranded. And it's reading along, adding on the corresponding bases. Then here, we've got translation. So this here is your single-stranded RNA. And this molecule here, this is your tRNA. And as we can see, it's got the amino acids added on. But obviously, the, t the tRNA only carries one amino acid, and each time, it will then get added on, forming this long chain, your polypeptide. So we've already come to the test cell section. So it's been a short video, but it's showed quite a bit of content. So I've got two questions here. So first of which, for one mark, which enzyme is used to create the RNA chain? And then for 25 marks, describe the different types of bacterial genetic material 
and describe how these can lead to the production of a protein which can cause disease. So thank you for watching. As I said, it's been a short video, but I hope you've learned something new. Peace out.